you decided to move from St. Petersburg, Florida and move to Belize in 2004. So I only went to Belize to teach for two weeks, but on the third day, I certainly knew that Belize was going to be in my vision and my future somehow. And so, yes, then in 2004, I packed up and moved with 10 animals, 10, 10. two teenagers, four containers and three vehicles. Welcome to the Jennifer J. Hammond Podcast. Jennifer is a licensed realtor, educator, speaker, and best-selling author. Jennifer's goal is to help you find your yay in every day. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. I am Jennifer J. Hammond. And I'm so excited to have you, Macarena Rose. Oh my gosh. You are the daughter of a, a good friend of mine who is our, our tax specialist, Linda DeMarli, which I love because Linda is the one person who's made me appreciate and actually really love taxes. So Macarena Rose, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. And I can go, oh, too. <laughs> and you didn't ask me to do the Macarena dance. So that's really good. <laughs> I'm sure everybody over and over in your life asked you to do the Macarena dance. Oh, my gosh. Well, you have to live up to your name. So at some point. <laughs> I do. It's really good. My mom named me very well. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so let's talk about you are a certified international property specialist. You know, we abbreviate that as a CIPS, a certified international property specialist, and an accredited buyer's representative, which I have as well. And then you're an international real estate and relocation consultant, another designation. And then you decided to move from St. Petersburg, Florida, and move to Belize in 2004. So I want to start with that because again you know not everybody just picks up their kids and goes hey let's go to a different country <laughs> so true <laughs> well being a, being my mom's daughter I am an adventurer so I believe in that I also believe in if you feel it you do it yeah because there's some magic to that right so you have to follow it and otherwise you're going to wonder what if and I don't believe in wondering what if so I only went to Belize to teach for two weeks, but on the third day, I certainly knew that Belize was going to be in my vision and my future somehow. And so, yes, then in 2004, I packed up and moved with 10 animals, 10, 10. two teenagers, four containers and three vehicles. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I just have to ask why, what, tell us about the 10 animals. Okay, so interesting, not the children, but the animals, right? <laughs> I'm with you. I would have moved to Belize if, you know, I could bring my children, right? But if I could not have brought the animals and had them in, and they had to go in quarantine, we would have never moved. Right. And they were all rescue animals. So it would have been very oh, irresponsible oh. for yep. me to leave them, you know, in Florida. Gosh, you know, why would I do that? And because there's no quarantine in Belize, I didn't have to entrust my animals to someone else, I could move. And so seamlessly, we all boarded one plane, all of us and the animals, and we landed in Belize City. And you know, the airport has never seen anything like that in Belize City before, because there kept coming carriers of animals. <laughs> Well, that answers one question. I think that people, if they're thinking of moving internationally and they're thinking about bringing their animals, one place they can go is Belize. It is without a quarantine. Some places have a year quarantine and I can't imagine having your animal, you know, if you're, if you're like me and your animals are children, I can't imagine someone else taking care of my child for me. Well, and it's funny that you say that because I had a friend actually when I moved to Washington, D.C. in the beginning and she was military and she was being stationed in a place that actually had a one year quarantine for her dog. And she was only on a one year um, assignment. And so she's like, he would just be in quarantine the whole time. So she said, so how do you feel about taking my dog for a year? And I did. And I had a great time. It was a beautiful journey. I just loved her her name was Kokomo and I loved my year with Kokomo yay oh, beautiful how, how lucky for Kokomo too thank you <laughs> it was oh, so much fun she was a retired police officer um dog and I just actually had a great time but anyway one year quarantine is a long time for animals so yeah that's a great one so I wanted to talk about you know again you chose Belize and so 
that's the other thing is, is what about setting up a business in Belize? I mean, because you, you know, you went there and of course you had to work, you know, you weren't just independently wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I actually thought I was going to, you know, they say you make plans and then the universe changes them for you. Right. right. So I actually planned, I had sold my house in Florida, two acres. And I figured I was just going to spend a year or two with the children and, you know, finish up their schooling and those things. However, um, I then found out there wasn't any buyer's representation, real buyer's representation, meaning, you know, real uh, accredited buyer's representation. You certainly know the difference too. And I was like, wow, so they can tell me whatever price and tell me whatever they want and everything else is not good that they don't have listed and only what they've listed is good. And I didn't like that. And I knew better because my mom's been a broker since I was a little child. I grew up sitting on houses and things and going to a lot of commercial properties with her. Long story short, I did have to start a business to your point. And when I decided to do that, I had to go get a work permit because you cannot work, of course, without a permit in the country. And then I had to get licensing and there were certain requirements I had to fulfill, which I did. And of course, here we are 17 plus years later and went through that that journey. So it can be done. And I do recommend people to think about a lot of people like, oh, I can't wait. I just want to move, you know, to a foreign, you know, country and go do that. I'm like, then what? Right which is where the consultation comes in. I can find someone a property anywhere in the world, right? To buy. That's not the problem. The challenge is, is what are you doing with your then what? You've landed there. You're on this beautiful, like behind you, you know, it looks like Belize. Behind me, it looks like Belize. (laughs) But however, then what are you going to do? Yeah. And that's again, uh, so buying, so that's the other thing I wanted to really dig into a little bit today is, so buying real estate as an American, or even as anyone coming into the country of Belize, let's talk about international real estate because, you know, people, and I do want to talk about at some point, we'll talk about the tax, you know, you know, pros and cons of it, but as an American, let's just take your, your journey. So going there and if somebody isn't going to live there, What's it like for them to come there and buy? Are there mortgages? So they have to bring all cash. What's the price like? Hot market, cold market? These are great questions. And to your point, currently the market is hot. Um, It seems to be a worldwide thread, right? The difference is, is we're not seeing multiple offers on one property. We're also not seeing that, you know, a property is, you know, listed one day and sold two days later, some cases the same day, right? Right. Uh, Like in the North Americas, right? It's a worldwide thing up there. But so the difference is, is that because there's no mortgages, right, that are, that are not cost prohibitive, I should say, right? Mortgages that make viable sense for an investment, Right. People have to bring a suitcase full of cash. And I don't mean that suitcase literally, but I mean, they've got to have cash that they can buy a property and have it sit there. So this comes to the reason why many people are choosing to buy vacation rentals so they can come and visit their property. My mom has spoken about how you can write those deductions off. It's your investment property, right? right. And then and then still have an asset that's you know accruing appreciation that is also making you money. And I think, that that, yeah, I was going to say, it's really important to have something that to me, you, you can have sleepy assets or you can have assets that are actually working for you. And especially, um, you know, a vacation rental, whether it's vacation rental by owners or by a local person who's renting them out or Airbnb, it's important. I think always, I always like your assets to never, to never be, la- to never be lazy, to ne- always be actively doing something for you. And so, and again, we'll definitely at the end, I want to make sure we, at, you know, answer questions for anybody who's in clubhouse or anyone who has questions about it. I'd be happy to, we're happy to do that, but let's go through some more of the basics. So for somebody who comes down there, can you kind of give us an idea? idea because I think of Belize as well first of all let's talk about Belize I mean you have right now behind you for anyone who's watching well I guess well for anybody who watches us you'll see all of these amazing beautiful videos from beautiful beaches there's beautiful diving Um, talk about Belize why would Belize be a place you would want to invest in real estate 
So there's a couple key reasons, and one of them is that it is English speaking. So it is the only country in Central America that is actually English speaking, which makes it very easy for travelers and visitors to literally be able to open up the opportunity for anyone to stay there. The nice thing is, is people can come visit, for example, myself, and I can hand them the keys to the car and they can go off because they can, if they get lost, right, they can ask anybody directions. And I don't think that, quite frankly, when I was moving to Belize in 2004, did I really put the weight of how big that was a benefit until I needed medical help and for one of the children. And I was like, I can understand clearly what the doctor's saying. This is an important thing. I'm not having to take out Google Translate. I'm not, I'm able to speak real quick, get to the point, get to the fact, make the decision and get them helped. And I realized then that the fact that Belize was English speaking was a really big thing. I didn't have to move somewhere and have everybody learn a new language. I speak Spanish fluently, thanks to my mother, the way I was raised. And yet most people don't, you know, speak fluently two languages, you know, like if they're moving to a foreign country, for example. So that's a big benefit. The second thing is, is the location is two hours from Houston or Miami. And that became really important to me. Again, I knew it was close, but it became important to me when my daughter became pregnant. I'm like, I can actually make it back to see the baby. Right. Yay! You know, in, right. So, so those kind of things. I think if you're going to move to another country to take in consideration that if you have parents where you're leaving from the, you know, if you're leaving from the United States and you have, you know, parents that are going to get, you know, older children that you're going to want to be part of their lives or grandchildren, you want to think about a place that you can get back to easily in in an event of emergency or just because you want to like, yeah. Right. And I think those are very good points. So let's talk a little bit more about the medical. I am curious if you're moving to a foreign country, I think a lot of times people are really worried about the medical. So how is the um, medical, the hospitals, all of the available services there? So this is a great question. When I moved to Belize, it was hard to find an MRI machine right? 17 years ago. And now it is not the fact. I mean, the, the, the truth is, is we have much advanced medical in comparison and surgeries, even open heart surgery that, you know, again, they were not doing when I moved to Belize. So every year it gets better. We have a great minister of health that is really, you know, stays on top of things, which has really helped um, Mr. Shabet. So or Minister Shabet. So I do know that in my case, personally, I've noticed that the medical is something that I'm more comfortable with if there's a crisis or something I need. Right. Wow. Um, people that are, that are in the military, a lot of them do fly back to the North Americas and will get their VA, you know, medical and, and stay on top of things that way. And some people do cross over to Mexico for other things that they want to get done medically. So there are, there's choices and alternatives, right? You're not locked into one thing, which I feel is very strong in anywhere that you move to. Absolutely. And so let's talk about that. How many people, and I'm, you probably don't have a number necessarily, but um, do you see a lot of Americans that have retired to Belize? Wow, I do. So I thought when I moved to Belize that I was one of the very few handful of, you know, expats, especially in my area in the Cayo district. And now when I look around, there are many, many foreigners. So I would say that, you know, like the secret's getting out. It used to be that Belize was called, uh, you know, mother's na- mother nature's best kept secret. I think the secret's out. <laughs> Belize is, is, is doable. It's easy, easy to manage. And it actually has a lot of benefits. So I think that is, you know, making the fact that retirees can come to Belize and live. It's a lot less expensive. So well, that's what know, I was going to say. Can you stretch the dollar further there? Yes, you know, Belize, I'm so sorry. Belize dollars are two to one U.S. dollar. So, you know, you go, you do get a stretch. And if you eat locally, what I mean is, you know, if you live in Belize, why import, you know, something from the United States as, you know, cornflakes or, you know, something Weetabix from, you know, England or UK. And when you can have stuff that we have local, right, that's where you really save a lot. That and that would make sense. Why not eat what's local when you're in a, a local place? I mean, yeah. and you have the bounty of the ocean there, so you have all this seafood, right? 
And we do. And, you know, Belize is very good about protecting our barrier reef, which is very important because it sustains our tourism. And that is, you know, our number one product that we really need to protect for sure. And, you know, we can get fresh seafood, literally. Um, they're very good at protecting. It's funny, right behind me is, you know, some it's, it's, it's a stingray, right? Um, but the fact is, is that, you know, you can eat fresh seafood. We also have very good farms and a lot of them are, you know, in the, in the interior part of Belize. Uh, I have a friend that's actually vegetarian and she says that the, she's vegetarian except for the, the, the bacon in Belize. I'm like, how can you be vegetarian except for the bacon in Belize? But it is just you know, I don't know if you've had bacon and it has a lot of white in it and then little, little pieces of meat and Belize, it's the opposite. It's all meat with just a little, you know, white, completely different. So you won't go hungry in Belize. And that's really nice because I'll take you to a story. My daughter moved to Belize with me as I shared. And when we had a pineapple, she went, oh, the pineapples are so much better than they are in Florida. I said, yes, honey, because that was just picked. I said, the difference is, is the pineapples that we get in the North Americas are usually picked green, maybe even hot, you know, hot housed and gassed. Yeah. And then they sit on the grocery shelf for a couple of weeks and you get it home and it might taste good, but nothing like when you just take it off and it's cut. Absolutely. I find that to be such a huge difference. I mean, wow. The taste of food, you know, it's kind of like, a, it's a natural form of organic because we're always trying to look at getting organic farmers or or organic fresh fruit. And it's amazing in a place like Belize, it's just, you, you get it much more plentiful, shall we say. It's true. So, you know, even hunger is not such an issue in comparison to a lot of countries because you can get, you know, there's trees, there's abundance of trees and things with fresh fruits and vegetables and avocados and oranges. And I never knew there were so many choices of mangoes. We have a lot of mangoes. Wow. So let's talk a little bit. Let's get some examples. Will you share like a specific example? If somebody had a retirement, um, and they're looking, they have some retirement funds and they're looking to move. Is it possible for them to find a small place like a condo or what are kind of some of the choices? Because there's obviously like in town and then there's out of town. Can you talk a little bit about what are the options there for real estate? These are really great questions. So there are some homes that are in the northern region of Belize on the mainland that a lot of retirees like to focus on and, and buy. And in that area, literally, you can find for 200000 a very nice home. Mm -hmm. And even on the sea, you know, around 345 to 450. And to have a three quarter acre property with a home with trees on the ocean and or the sea is is really exceptional, right? Wow. Um, at that price point. And then on the island, things as every always, they go up on an island. And the prices of a condo are going to run anywhere about three hundred thousand dollars for a nice condo. That's you know a two bedroom condo looking at the barrier reef, which is the money shot, right? right. And those things are, are feasible to turn into vacation rental properties. So therefore they can be income producing. And then if you decide to move inland, just go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask you before we go into inland. So if somebody gets a vacation property, what kind of income could they look at um, potentially having? So potentially there's, there's a unit that I know specifically of that, you know, they literally make 75,000 US dollars a year, which is pretty darn good for vacation rental. And they come and use it quite often. And of course that takes off of the time that they make money, but they're netting a good amount of income, right. For having a property, just sit there. That's appreciating value anyway. Right. So it used to be people would buy a condo, come and stay two or three weeks and then close it up. And then people went, oh, with this Airbnb and VRBO, I can make money with it. And so it has really excelled um, the ability of the people who have made income from their properties. 
Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things I just wanted to see so that people could have kind of, when you have a real specific example, it's always good to see that. I mean, 75,000 is, is, I mean, especially if you bought it for under half a million to have that income monthly is, or not monthly, annually is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay. So now you're going to continue. So you can have the ones on, on the water, which are actually pretty reasonable again. And then you have the ones on the island, which go up a little bit in price, but you have, as you said, the money shot, you have incredible views of the, the barrier reef and the water, I'm sure. Um, but also, so now if we go inland, let's talk about, you know, what kind of prices would people be looking at? I'm giggling because you've like keyed this up and behind me is inland shots, right? I'm like, wow, how did she do that? Very well done, Jennifer. Yay! 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 <laughs> So it actually is a great value. I chose to move inland because I can go visit the sea. It was close enough, you know, an hour and a half drive in my car, or I can take a plane real quick. And if I want to, right, but I like to drive. Um, but so inland, you can literally get a home for like $125,000 to $165,000. That would work as a vacation rental. And then if you wanted something that might give you more options, like a close, a lock off room, you know, another like a three bedroom, one that would be yours that you would lock off and then rent the other two around 295, 325 range. So there's a lot of options. The difference is, is a lot of times they have land around them. So you have what you have more birds, you have animals, you can, you know, grow your own fruit. It's very easy to grow in Belize. You do not need to have a green thumb. <laughs> That's, and then that's really important is, is to be able to, that's one of the things, like even the pictures you're, we're seeing behind you is so beautiful, all the lushness and the fact that things grow easily, which is not true in all parts of the United States, for sure. <laughs> no, and I know when I, I literally on my veranda, I was eating papaya and, you know, the seeds would go over, you know, I threw the seeds over, of course, right? Yeah. I have a luscious, huge papaya tree. It's just a riot because you do not need to have have a green thumb. The gr it's very different when the ground is fertile, you, you know, so incredibly abundantly fertile that you don't need to, you know, add anything to it. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so, I love, I'm so interested in gardening as I, as I kind of moving on in my life, I feel like having some amazing, um, you know, life around me with, whether it's trees and flowers, but also having fruit trees and being able to have, you know, things that you grow that you actually get to eat yourself, I think is, is such a blessing. And, you know, and as you said, with the pineapple, I've had an experience recently where I had blueberries from an organic farmer in Virginia, and I just was blown away by the taste. I was like, I went back to the, to the farmer and got like three more things. And I thought, oh my gosh, I am just going to OD on blueberries because I haven't had a blueberry that tasted that good since probably childhood. And so I can relate to the story about pineapples. It's interesting, isn't it? That um, and of course the nutrition value is much higher, but the taste value is yummy. So good for you for going back. <laughs> I'm getting more and more blueberries. Okay, so international real estate, obviously, it, it's something that a lot of people are very interested in. And so let's talk a little bit. Um, I'm gonna so let's talk about your you have a certificate, the certified international property specialist. And and I think that that's something that is is really powerful because again, like you said when you got to Belize they didn't really have buyer broker or they didn't have buyer representation and many places in the world I worked in the Caribbean and uh, it's kind of like the wild wild west I'm curious well first of all before I go there so do you guys have an MLS a multiple listing system where everybody puts their listings no, no. <laughs> and it it would it, it makes me um horrified in many ways I started the first you know realtors association with a handful of really great committed people when I yeah. that was in 2006 and I got to sign the bilateral with National Association of Realtors accepting Belize in so I'm very proud of that that you know never have brought that first one into Belize yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, is MLS, a lot of people don't want to share their listings. There's a lot of open listings. They don't want you to, they necessarily don't want you to bring a buyer, which is taken some years. But a lot of people that we've been blessed to work with understand that, you know, we're their, we're their other client. We're bringing them a buyer. 
yeah. right? It's great to have a listing, but if you don't have a buyer, you're not helping your, you're not serving your listing. Yeah. And so that is, you know, I've seen some changes in that, which is very promising. And MLS, I haven't seen that yet because again, the, the, the sharing, um, the sharing sensitivity is not there yet. Yeah. Um, countrywide. And, you know, there's not a ton of realtors either in the country. So, you know, there's, there's not a lot of choices as far as people going, if I have a property for sale, I want everyone to know about it, right? Right. I want to help that seller sell. And, and so there's not a lot of choices of people to get to work with, to share those listings that are wanting to do that. So. Yeah. And just so anyone who's listening doesn't know an MLS, a multiple listing service means that we all as different brokers from different companies, we all put it in one database so that you could see everything that's for sale. So let's talk about that. So from an American point of view, I mean, like I said, I've I've been licensed (laughs) down in the Caribbean. So I'm familiar with this concept of um, not representing the buyer and not sharing listings. And it, I, I call it the wild, wild west because it's just amazing to me that it's still the way that real estate is done. So many other places in the world, different from the United States where you know you have someone who represents the buyer, you have someone who represents the seller, and then we all share the listings so that we can all help each each other out, which I think is, it is a great concept. So I am so grateful. I always end my, my show with a yay. So I'm going to ask Linda and John to also say yay with us as we go off the air and Mac and Irina, if you'll stay around after we um, finish, I will um, do that. So John and Linda, if you guys will say yay, I'll do my. Jennifer Hammond Show 